In my first week of owning this mini excavator, I ended up in the emergency room. And maybe by making this video, I can help some of you not make the same mistake I made when I first bought my machine. So let me tell you my story. Due to my own stupidity, in the first week of me owning this mini excavator behind me, I wound up in the emergency room. So I'm going to share my story with you and let you know why you should always listen to the safety precautions, use your safety equipment, and don't be like me. Maybe I can save you some pain and agony. So it was a Saturday morning. Went out to Muskogee, Oklahoma, went out to k &R Equipment, and I bought this little one-ton Chinese mini excavator. Was really excited about it. We went out to our vacation property at Billy Creek, and I started getting used to the controls and running around. I was picking up logs, uh, dug a little in the creek, and I did a ton of work with it. And it was so much fun. I was so excited about it, so I decided to take it home with me. So I loaded it up, we brought it home, and then at the house, I had a few projects I wanted to do with it as well. Uh, up in my front yard, we've got a drainage issue by the driveway, and I'm like, oh, I could use this, and I could dig right around that, that front yard area. So that's what I did. And I was digging around the front, and then I ran around the yard, and I did a few things. I had a stump that had been sitting in the side of the woods for over a year. A guy with a skid steer came out when he was doing our uh, pool pad and he stuck it off in the woods. Well, I tried to move it and I couldn't move it. This thing is heavy and it's such a thick root ball. I was messing with my chainsaw and I'm like, this is too much. So the first day home with this, I used a thumb and I picked it up and here I am. And I carried it right out into the backyard and I stuck it back in the woods. So then I found a tree that was dead and I'm like, I wonder if this thing's got enough power to push over a tree. Do you think it does? So, I went over and I pushed over a tree. So I pulled my phone out and I drive up to it and I used a bucket and I push it over. I'm like, holy cow, I can't believe it. This thing just knocked that tree over. This thing is a powerhouse. I'm like, man, I need to find another dead tree. And I need to grab my tripod and I need to set it up and I need to film it. After pushing over that one tree, I decided to come back up and work around the driveway just a little bit before it got too dark. I just finished digging in the front yard and I needed to put my machine away for the night. So what do I do? Do I drive all the way down to my shop, which I have a 10 foot tall door to put this in? Or do I put it in the garage, which has a just over a six foot door? And this is just a little over seven feet. Which one do I do? And I know tomorrow I'm going to have to use it out in the front yard again, like 20 feet away. So I can take my one mile per hour machine and drive it all the way to the shop and take, I don't know, three or four minutes to drive back there. And then tomorrow, three or four minutes to come back. Or I can just pull out a couple bolts on each front rail, four bolts on the rear, and I can pull the roof off, which I don't really need the roof. I mean, it's just a sunshade. I can just wear my little goofy little fisherman's hat and stay out of the sun. I don't need that thing. It's a mouse trap anyway, and if I'm going to tip it over, I'd rather be able to bail off of it quick than have this roof cage thing get me all caught up and tied up in it when it goes over. So, I did what any smart guy would do, right? Took it off and put it on the floor of the garage and pulled it in the garage that night. So tomorrow afternoon when I get home from work, I'm just going to pull it out on the driveway, finish digging, and then, uh, yeah, I'm good to go. The following day, I pull it out of the garage and I work in the front yard just a little bit and I figure uh, I'll get some work done and then I'll go play. And I wanted to push that tree over because that would be awesome. So after I finish digging around the driveway and make my trench, then I go off into the woods and I'm playing around. I pull some vines down and stuff and I found the next dead tree. So dead tree number two was right here. You can see the stump behind me. So I came over here and I'm like, I'm gonna do a test bump. I've got some video footage from my little security camera on the house, really blurry and grainy because it's so far away. So I come up here with the bucket and I get lined up and I do a little test bump. And I'm like, you know what? If it moves when I do my test bump, 
then I'm gonna grab my tripod and I'm gonna come out here and film it. Cause one of these days I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been talking about that for years. Anyway, back to current day times. So uh, I did a little test bump and that's all it took. All of a sudden, I, there was stuff around me. I was pinned, I was in pain. I didn't know what was going on, but you can kind of see the moment of impact. There was a branch, a big, huge branch on the top of that tree. And when I did my test bump, it fell. And I was underneath it with a mini excavator with no mousetrap sunshade on it. And I learned that day, it's not just a sunshade, it's a roof to protect things from falling on your head. So I just got hit, I'm right here. And you can see in the video, I stagger off. I don't know what's going on. I come back, I'm like, what in the world happened? I'm leaning on the machine. I check my head and there's blood all over my hand. And I see all the carnage of all the dead branches and sticks and this log right on the machine, all around the machine. I was like, holy crap. Like, I think I really screwed myself up. I'm like, I got to go. I got to go get with Carrie and she's got to check me out. Like, I'm, I don't even know if I'm okay. I'm going to sit down to tell you this part. I'm going from the excavator beelining for the house because Carrie's up there working on the deck around the pool. And I get up to her like, Carrie, I need you to take a look at something. She's like, oh, let me finish what I'm doing. I'm like, can you please look right now? She's like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? <laughs> I'm like, take a look at my head. Am I okay? Like, seriously, like, look at my head. <laughs> am, I, am I okay? At that point, I didn't know what was going on. I know I was bleeding. I know my head hurt. I know I got hit with something large. I wasn't really sure what was going on. And she looked at me and she said, you need to go to the ER. Like, you need to get that looked at. I'm like, yeah, my hand's killing me too. I think I broke my hand. And I had this, like, golf ball-sized lump on the back of my hand. I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I crushed my hand. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. Anyway, I'm like, I, I need to, wait, where are my glasses? My glasses are gone. So I go out by the machine, my glasses are there, my hat's over there. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is bad. And so we go to the ER to get checked out and they look at my hand, which was so huge and swollen by then. And they look at my hand and they x-ray it. And I'm like, it's for sure broken. Like, uh, I'm going to need a cast. I might need surgery. Like, look at my head. Do I need stitches? I mean, I know it's not that bad, but I don't know. These gashes seem pretty deep to me. So the doctor looks at my head and says, no, nah, you don't need stitches, man. You're good. They come back with the x-ray, say, your hand looks like it's good. You just bruised it badly. Badly bruised it, but bruised it. I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I am the luckiest guy alive today. I'm alive. Like, it, it could have been so bad. So my hand issue is pretty interesting. So I was going to do my little test bump, and I drive forward, and then I pull back, and that's when the log hit my hand. Right here. Hit my hand, bent this stick all the way down, and when it did that, it kind of crushed my hand in the, in the middle of it all. This was bent down. I tried to straighten it back up and it just snapped off. So I'm missing my left stick. So I called Ron at K&R Equipment uh, that sold me this Kimron. And he said he can get replacement parts and he can get me this stick. And he's like, why don't you try welding it? And I'm like, you know what? That's a good idea. So I brought it to my buddy. He welded it up for me, put it back on. You can see they're not totally straight, but they work just fine. So after all this... My machine's fine. There's no long lasting impact to my machine. I'm okay. And the end result is, man, I came this close to being in a really bad situation. It was a painful experience. I don't plan to do it again. You won't see me drive around without this roof again. If I take this roof off, it'll be because I'm working on my machine. So I would advise all of you to leave your roofs on. It's a safety item and it works because had that log fallen, it would have hit this and possibly deflected off and not just smash me. So when it hit the stick and bent down, my leg was up here and the log came and it smashed me in the back of the leg, if you can believe it. 
you know, bruise the living daylights out of the back of my leg. So it bruised my right arm, my left arm, the back of my left leg, my hand, and got me in the back of the head. Man, so lucky. I am so lucky. Don't take your roof off. Leave your safety equipment intact. It's there for a reason. <laughs> so I think I'm one of the luckiest guys on the face of the earth. I don't know how that happened. My own stupidity. Oh, and that was almost the end of me. I mean, seriously. Had that thing hit me at the right angle. I mean, who knows what could have happened. So we're driving back home. Got my son with me. He's 14. And he's like, Dad, why are you smiling so much? Why do you look so happy? I'm like, buddy, do you realize what just happened to me? And he's like, yeah, you're bleeding, you're cut, your hand's swollen, and yeah, you're like hurt, and we're leaving the hospital. I'm like, right, but I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I'm like, I'm like, no stitches, no broken bones, no crushed hand, no broken neck. I'm alive. Everything's okay. I've got a bent stick on my Mini X. Valuable lesson learned. And man, I'm alive. <laughs> So we get back home, and guess what I did? I put the sunshade slash mousetrap back on the machine. It might not seem like the most solid thing in the world, but this would have saved my head had I just had it on. So take a lesson from me. Don't end up in the hospital. This is not just a sunshade, but it's actually a chunk of metal above your head that if you happen to knock into something and a branch comes to clock you in the head, that should save your head. I mean, I probably would have gotten scratched up a little. Maybe my leg still would have gotten mushed, but <laughs> it could have been so much worse. Leave your roof on. Use your safety equipment. Follow this manufacturer safety instructions. Be safe out there and enjoy your time in the trees.